so good morning so in yesterday class we have discussed some conditions and how they are going to behave different types of end conditions for columns we have discussed so now today we will discuss the crippling stress so crippling stress is nothing but euler stress so it can also be called as euler stress in terms of effective length so effective length is noted with the le and radius of gyration k so how this crippling stress and or euler stress is going to behave with respect to effective length and radius of gyration we have to find out today and so for this type of sections the moment of inertia the moment of inertia can be written as i is equal to a k square so where k is nothing but radius of gyration where i i is the here i value is the least value for moment of inertia we have taken in this terms now by using now with crippling load now with the crippling load now with the crippling load so crippling load is generated with p in terms of in terms of effective length le and rate is and uh, effective length le is given by so we we know the value for any type of sections the crippling load formula with effective length is pi square ei by le square so here we we have we have the least value of moment of inertia just substitute that that is equal to pi square e of ak square divided by le square so by simplifying this equation it can be written as pi e a divided by le by k whole square so le square yes k square can be written as like this now what we have to find out the clipping stress or euler stress we have to find out now and the stress corresponds now the stress corresponds to crippling load now the sorry now the stress corresponding to crippling load is given by so now the crippling stress we have to find out so crippling stress or euler stress is equal to crippling load divided by area a so crippling load is generated with p divided by a so here we have find out the value of p so just substitute that then the equation can be written as pi square e a divided by l e by k whole square into a here a a will get cancel out then the finally the crippling stress sorry pi square e a by l e we have substitute the p value and a value a a will get cancel out now from this the crippling stress is equal to pi square e by l e by k whole square so this is the crippling stress or euler stress with respect to the with respect to the effective length and radius of gyration so here we can substitute the value of le depend upon the m conditions so previously we have made some uh, effective length tabular column we have made now so there we are going to have the value of le the relation between effective length and uh, actual length so by substituting that values we can get the required crippling stresses for each and every section so now we will see this some example problems so if you see the first one so here first problem is a solid bar of 3 meters long 5 cm diameter is used as a strut with both ends hinged condition determine the crippling load take e is equal to 2 into 10 to the power of 5 newton per mm square so what is the given that has given so length l has given that is as 3 meters has given so if we are going to write in mm so it will become 3000 mm similarly the diameter d as given as 5 centimeters that is equal to 50 mm and the value of e as given 2 into 10 to the power of 5 newton per mm square so now the value of i we will find the moment of inertia i is equal to for the circular section the value the formula is pi d power 4 by 64 so here we know the d value that is 50 mm power 4 by 64 if you are going to calculate this value we will get the value as 306.79 
into 10 to the power of 3 mm power 4 will get now we have to find out the crippling load crippling load p for any type of section the crippling load formula is pi square with respect to with respect to f tool pi square ei by l square so here we know the value of e i we have find out it and we know the l value l e has given 3 meters so substitute them then pi square into 2 into for both ends hinge the formula is pi square ei by l square pi square into 2 uh, the value has given 2 into 10 to the power of 5 into the i value is 306.79 into 10 to the power of 3 divided by l value 3000 square so if i are going to substitute them um, the total value it will come as 67.28 into 10 to the power of 3 newtons it will come so this is the crippling load that we are going to get when the both ends are hinged conditions so similarly for this same problem now we will find out the different types of condition the other different kinds we will find out so if you see here for the same problem now we will find out the same crippling load one end is fixed other end free both ends fix and one end fix and other end hinge so if the one end is fixed other end is free the crippling load formula so second can the crippling load formula is pi square ei by 4 l square we know the pi value ma pi square and e we know e value is 2 into 10 to the power of 5 i value is came 306.79 into 10 to the power of 3 divided by 4 into 3000 square if we are going to multiply these equations we will get the value as 16.8 16.822 into 10 to the power of 3 newtons we are going to get so this is for one end fix and other end is free so next we will find out for the second condition both ends are fixed condition if the both ends are fixed what is the formula we are going to have so if the both ends are fixed the crippling load formula is pi square ei by oh sorry 4 pi square ei by l square and second condition is both ends are fixed so if the both ends are fixed the crippling of pharma is 4 pi square ei by l square then the we know the values 4 pi square into e value we know that is 2 into 10 to the power of 5 and the i value is 306.79 into 10 to the power of 3 divided by l value is 3000 square then we will get the value of p as uh, 269.15 kilo newtons will get so this value crippling load can be find out with respect to effect to uh, effect to length also so that will that we will see now so this is with respect to the actual length w with respect to effect to length also we can find out uh, that is like nothing but for any type of with respect to effect to length the crippling load formula is pi square ei by le square so here for both ends fix the value of le can be written as if the both ends are fixed the value of le can be written as l by 2 so by substituting the value of l by 2 in the le then it can be written as l square by 4 so this can be written as 4 pi square 4 pi square ei by l square so the same formula is going to come up here so if they are going to ask with respect to effect to length then we can find out in this way ma if not directly we can substitute like this so two conditions we are going to have we can do any value and the next condition is one end is fixed and other end is hinge if one end is fixed so one one is fixed and other is hinged condition if one end is fixed and other end is uh, hinged condition the formula is p is equal to 2 pi square ei by l square so we know the values 2 pi square into the e value is 2 into 10 to the power of 5 and the i value is 306.79 into 10 to the power of 3 l value is 3000 square if you are going to calculate uh, the p value will come as 134.57 into 10 to the power of 3 newtons it will come so like this the crippling loads we have to find out for the different types of sections if it is of circular section so now we will find out for an 
uh, any column section which is going to have different types of section property so for this some example i have taken so see here a column a column of timber section 15 by 20 centimeters of cross section it is going to have it is going to have 6 meters long both ends are fixed condition if the end smallest of the timber is fixed and it, and it is 17.5 kilo tons per mm square determine the crippling load and safe load so we have to find out the crippling load and safe load we have to find out so first we will go with the uh, given data so here he has a column of timber section 15 by 20 centimeters as given so if you see the figure so 15 by 20 centimeters so this is the cross section of our uh, beam so timber beam so 15 centimeters and this is of 20 centimeters he has given so for this section we have to find the crippling load and safe factor so uh, next so dimensions he has given as 15 by 20 centimeters he has given and the value of l length of the our bar he has given as 6 meters that is equal to 6000 mm he has given the end smallest he has given as 17.5 kilo newton per mm square he has given and similarly here the factor of safety also he has given as 3 now we have to find out the crippling load similarly we have to find out the safe load we have to find out so the crippling load formula is same with respect to effort and if you are going to find out with respect to effort then the formula is pi square ei by le whole square if the both end surface the formula can be written as uh, the value of le can be written as l by 2 and similarly safe load so safe load is nothing but what is the formula for safe load safe load is called crippling load by factor of safety if you are going to find out the crippling load then only we can find out the safe load so first we will find out the crippling load so so we know that for any type of sections for any type of sections with any with any end conditions for any type of sections with any conditions the crippling load the crippling load formula is pi square ei by le square so here the condition is given both ends are fixed condition he has given so if the both ends are fixed condition the value of le will become l by 2 so just substitute that we will get the required condition if i am going to substitute that it is equal to pi square ei by l by 2 whole square so to find out uh, we know the e value we know the l value we don't know the i value so now we will find out this i value nothing but moment of inertia now we will find out throughout x x axis we will find out and throughout so this is of x axis and this is of y axis we will find out the moment of inertia throughout x and throughout y and whichever is less we will consider that as an our moment of inertia then first we will find out throughout i x x in x direction that is b d cube by 2 1 so here the b can be written as 150 centimeters now if you convert into mm it will become 150 mm into 200 cube divided by 12 if you are going to calculate the value will come as yeah 100 into 10 to the power of 6 mm power 4 is this is throughout xx next we will find out throughout y axis if you are going to find out throughout y axis it will become 200 into 150 cube divided by 12 if you are going to calculate the value will come as 56.25 into 10 to the power of 6 mm power if you see here the both values if you are going to compare the value of i x x the value sorry the value of i y y is greater less than i x x value so this uh, it is confirmed that therefore the column will tends to buckle in only y direction so if the moment of inertia whichever is the less value is going to come up either in x direction or y direction whichever the less value is going to come up in that direction only the buckling effect is going to takes place so now we have to consider this as our i value whichever is less that we have to consider so here the lesser value is y value so then we are going to consider that 
the buckling effect is going to coincide only in the y direction only the buckling effect is going to take place the column is going to bend up now we will find out the crimping load p is equal to pi square ei by l by 2 whole square so nothing but pi square into the value of e here as given as 17.5 into 10 to the power of 3 and the value of i is 56.25 into 10 to the power of 6 divided by the value of l as given as 6 meters that is equal to 6000 divided by 2 whole square so by calculating this we will get the value as 1.079 into 10 to the power of 6 newtons very good so the crimping load we have five the crimping load we have find out here so next we have to find out the safe load we have to find out so what is the formula of safe load safe load is equal to crippling load crippling load divided by factor of safety we have find out the crippling load and we know in the problem he has given the factor of safety he has given as 3 by substituting that we will get the required answer so here the crippling load is 1.079 into 10 to the power of 6 and the factor of safety is 3 by calculating this we will get the required answer as 359.67 kilo newton so like this the factor of safety nothing but the safe load and crippling load p we have to calculate so this is for both ends are fixed conditions here we have finite load. if the both ends are uh, the if they are going to differ the conditions then the formula is going to change you have to find out the value of pi p here so like this so we'll see another example so now we have considered for uh, for circular section we have finite nothing but for bar end we have finite and the rectangular portion we have finite now we'll find out for an t section we will find out so see another example so what he has given uh, calculate Euler's critical load so see here Euler's critical load for a strut of tree section he has given which the flange is being of 10 centimeters and the depth is of 8 centimeters nothing but if you are going to consider it is of T section so this is nothing but flange section and this is the below part so the flange section how much has given 10 centimeters he has given so the flange is of 10 centimeters and the depth is of so from here the total depth of our t section is 8 centimeters he has given from top to bottom he has given as 8 centimeters and both flange and stem are 1 centimeter thick so this is a flange and this is of stem now so both are of 1 centimeter thickness he has given so this is of 1 centimeter thickness he has 1 centimeter thickness here so from so the below the stem portion is of 7 meters height from this and next what he has given the strut is of 3 meters long but at the, uh, built in the both ends take e is equal to 2 into 10 to the power of 5 newton per mm square so now the critical load p we have to find out so see here so the the length of our section he has given that is of uh, 3 meters he has given that is equal to 3000 mm sorry here i have given 3 centimeters sorry three, this is of 3 meters so the length of our section is 3 meters that is 3000 mm and Young's minus e has given that is equal to 2 into 10 to the power of 5 newton per mm square and next what he has given uh, flange and width sections he has given so now for this type if these types of sections he has they are going to give up first what you have to calculate first the cg value we have to calculate the center of gravity of the section we have to calculate throughout so throughout y by axis only the buckling effect is going to come up so now we will find out the center of gravity throughout the y by section so to find out the center of gravity the formula is y bar is equal to a1 y1 plus a2 y2 by a1 plus a2 so here a is a1 is nothing but area under the first selection and area of the second section 
y1 is nothing but from the bottom the y1 distance from y2 distance from the bottom we have to calculate so now we will calculate the a1 so a1 is equal to area of the flange so the area of the flange is 10 into 1 centimeter 10 into 1 so it will become 10 centimeter square so next y1 y1 is equal to distance of cg so this cg we have to find distance of cg from the bottom end we have to calculate distance of cg from the bottom end we have to calculate so from the if you are going to calculate from the bottom end so 7 plus 1 divided by 2 7 plus 1 divided by 2 so 7 is this is and 1 divided at the half of the portion it is going to have 7 plus 1 by 2 that is equal to 7.5 centimeter from the bottom if you are going to get if you are going to calculate from the top it will become 1 by 2 the cg the y1 value will become as 1 by divided by 2 that will become 0 0.5 so we are calculating from the bottom of our section that's why 7 plus 1 by 2 the from the total length we have to calculate similarly a2 we will find out a2 is nothing but area of the bottom section the area of the bottom section is 7 into 1 7 into 1 it will become 7 centimeter square now similarly we will find out the value of y2 so here the value of y2 from bottom we have to find out the distance of cg of a2 from the bottom we have to find out nothing but 7 divided by 2 7 divided by 2 that is equal to 3.5 centimeters so now we have find out the values of a1 y1 a2 y2 just substitute in the y bar way. then y bar is equal to 10 into 7.5 plus 7 into 3.5 divided by 10 plus 7 if you are going to calculate this value then it will become 5.85 centimeters so the y bar nothing but the center of gravity from bottom it is going to act uh, from bottom it is going to acting at a distance of 5.85 centimeters so from bottom it is going to act the center of gravity cg value is going to act so consider from bottom it is going to act at a distance of 5.85 centimeters so if from 8 if you are going to neglect 5.85 the remaining portion is uh, 2.152 so from top the cg value is going to act at 2.15 centimeters so from bottom the cg is going to act at 5.85 and from the top of the flange it is going to act at 2.15 centimeters so now we have calculated the the cg value we have calculated uh, to find out the crippling load formula is p is equal to pi square e i by l square now we have to find out the i value throughout uh, nothing but i x x moment of inertia towards x axis and y axis we have to find out whichever is less that formula we have to consider so first we will find out throughout x axis so i x x is equal to so the formula first for the first flange uh, it is of rectangular section uh, the formula of it will come bd cube by 12 plus a1 h square similarly for the second flange same bd cube by 12 plus a2 into h square so here the val for the first plan the b and d are 10 into 1 cube divided by 12 plus uh, for the first flange the area value is a value is a1 value is 10 centimeter square so 10 into the value of h2 here can be find out by so from the from the top of the flange the the cg is going to lie at 2.15 centimeters and here the top of the, the y bar is uh, sorry the stem thickness is 1 centimeter nothing but 1 divided by 2 then it will come as 2.15 minus 0 0.5 whole square similarly for the bottom the b the b value is 1 and the d value is 7 cube divided by 12 plus a2 value for the second section is 7 and here h2 the h2 can be written as from the bottom the cg is going to lie at 5.85 centimeters and for the bottom section the thickness is 7 meters sorry the depth is 7 meters divided by 2 it will become 3.5 so then 5.85 minus 5.85 minus 3.5 whole square so like this the h2 and the h, h square values we have to find out now 
h square is nothing but from the cg we have to neglect the stem thickness the depth of the section we have to neglect the depth of the section divided by 2 we have to do right so if we are going to calculate this value the i axis value will get 95.29 centimeter power 4 we will get for the i axis similarly next we will find out in y axis i y y is equal to so here when you are going to calculate only in the section of i axis we will get the values of a1 into h square if you are going to calculate vertically then we don't get these two values only these values we are going to get then the formula will come as db cube by 12 plus d2 b2 cube by 12 it will come d1 b1 cube by 12 d2 b2 cube by 12 will come here is the values of a1 h square a2 h square won't come because we are going to act only in vertical section then we know that d for the first one d depth here he has given 1 into 10 cube by 12 for the second one 7 into 1 cube by 12 if you are going to calculate the i wave value will get 83.916 centimeter power 4 will get so if you see here the i x value is 95.29 i y value is 83.916 so comparing both of the sections the i y value is lesser so the buckling effect is going to take place in an y direction only so like this the buckling effect is going to take place here throughwards y direction only the buckling effect is going to take place so now we will consider the moment of inertia for our section as i y only so now by substituting so here the value of i we have finited now we will find out the crippling load p so the crippling load the crippling load for any type of section is p is equal to pi square ei by le whole square that is the only thing so here in the problem he has given uh, the section as uh, both and both and uh, the strategy stream built in both ends are fixed as given uh, built uh, built in the both ends nothing but fixed condition as given so for the fixed condition the l d value will become as l by 2 if it is a fixed condition the l d value is going to differ depend upon that we have to this uh, define them. then if you are going to subset pi square into e value uh, he has given the formula that is so 2 into 10 to the power of 5 and i value we have found it as 839160 divided by here l value is 3000 divided by 2 if you are going to calculate the value will come as 736.190 kilo newton so this is the crippling load for an uh, t section flange when both ends are fixed condition so like this we have to calculate the uh, values for different types of conditions